Ever since Mega Man 11 was revealed, fans have had high hopes for the series, as Mega Man 11 was more or less the revival of the classical era of Mega Man. The game is finally in HD and not classical NES like like with Mega Man 9 and 10. And of course, with a new Mega Man game, there will be 8 new Robot Masters and 8 brand new weapons to choose from. However, back when the pre-order trailer was revealed for the game and that new Double Gear system was featured in it, most fans saw the potential of what it could do. Like, sure, slowing down time may be funky and is of a great help and the Double Gear shot is super duper cool. And what is more interesting to point out is the benefit of utilizing the power gear itself. It enhances the capabilities of each weapon, even your standard buster. Like unlocking more powerful variants of the weapon, like with Pile Driver, making a new quirk out of a weapon like with Blazing Torch and Acid Barrier, and so on and so forth. And not only that, but it outside of the Power Gear variants, the new suits Mega Man gets when using any weapon are very good touches and quality details in my opinion, because they emphasize more on how Mega Man even emits such variable power. And well, today, I, Kroby, want to show you all how these ideas from Mega Man 11 could apply to the older weaponry that Mega Man obtained throughout his older days. The essentials to accomplish that are a new power gear moves, a new suit containing a buster variant and the helmet design for Mega Man with potential little add-ons here and there, like a mask design or maybe even a sort of engine supply behind his back. Again, they're just extra add-ons uh, only if I think they fit. In addition to adding new power gear moves, I'm also thinking about changing some of the weapons because I either think they need a revamp or I just have a different approach for them, or straight up tweak their damage import or fix what they lack altogether. It is also fun to give a new setup for a weapon and balance stuff around it. And just gotta point this out, this is technically nothing new I'm doing. It's more of a revamped video series from my older videos of me showing crappy looking pixel art sprites of older weapons in 11 style. They are just static images though, nothing beyond that. Huh? No, I saw you lurking there. You thought you're being mischievously stealthy and funny, huh? Well, no one likes you. No one wants to have a cup of tea with you. You should just get out of here. Oh, and yes, since I stated that they are pixel sprites, everything will be shown in pixel style because it is what I'm good at. But if you enjoy those ideas, consider at least leaving a like to the video if you want to see more of it in the future. Because, you know, Algorithm is weird. Anyhow, with everything cleared away, let's at least begin with the standard buster real quick. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Mega Man just teleports in, can shoot with his buster, slide and do his Mega Man stuff. But things get spicy when using the speed gear however, as you know, it slows the flow of time. Even your own speed and shots, leaving only trails to indicate the effect. As for the power gear, you activate it, charge up until you shoot two charge shots in a row, one that is blue dealing 3 damage, and the one after is red dealing 5 damage, which makes a total of 8 damage if both hit a singular peefy enemy. With the double gear activated however, you do uh, slow down the flow of time, while you can charge up to unleash the double gear shot, which does a flat 8 damage by the way, but that's for the bosses and mini bosses too I assume. It does in fact deal full damage to any type of stage enemy, which is why this poor big eye dies to one double gear shot. <laughs> Alright, now to the weapon. Oh, and by the way, I'm not doing them in numerical order, I'm just showing which weapon I finished its animation first. So let's start a chart with rolling cutter, as the design for the helmet is the most simple you can get from such a basic robot master design like Cutman. Just slap a scissor on his head and some weird looking ears and call it a day. But just because it is basic doesn't mean it is lacking, it just gets straight to the point. As for the arm buster design though, it's inspired by Cutman's droopy spear adaptation of how he throws his drilling cutters, giving him a buster is a bit more lame for Cutman since he's the original one with scissors, 
but for Mega Man I could see it working well as it's not his main shtick anyway. But as for how it works, well, it functions like the normal rolling cutter you are familiar with, but with a different throwing pose. And for the power gear, you choose the same size cutter, but the two cutter sides open in a 180 degree angle now, which helps the scissor propel and rotate forward turning so much that it becomes a running razor circle, ripping through enemies with 4 damage also, then turning back and then forth again until it gets to your grip. I've been inspired by how Cutman's super mood works in Bardub, but I decided to not merely copy it and do something different with this move instead. And well, you never know when to use a rapidly propelling scissor, they could help widely in some circumstances. Now we're talking explosive ideas with Hyper Bomb. I'm pretty sure when designing a Hyper Bomb in a style of 11, most people would choose a Mega Man with a Mohawk for a helmet who looks utterly silly. Buster Wise is something I expect less people think of though. Nothing major, just Mega Man with a fuse stuck to his backhand. To fit in with the seeming, the arm itself has textures reminiscent of grenades, and I don't, I don't mean reminiscent of this sadomasochist. Oh yeah! One of those modified weapons is the Hyper Bomb, though it largely derives from the part of version and hasn't undergone any craziness like what Mega Man Maker did to that weapon. Like I'm with you, Mega Man Maker, fixing the weapon to make it explodable in enemy context. Yeah, sure. Giving it the property to to be thrown in different arcs. To me it's a bit too much for a common weapon with ammo, but really, giving it a massive Bomberman explosion effect is too extreme. I don't mean hostility or hating on the work or anything, but it always irks me to be honest. Anyhow, for the Power Gear version, what do you know, you throw a big hyper bomb, but after the initial explosion, the big bomb shield fractures and another one cracks until it reveals a tiny looking atomic bomb, which takes a couple of seconds before it massively explodes. That's how you handle a large explosion that has a twist to it. The idea was partially inspired by Bomb Man's super move, which is a massive bomb, but again, I'm saying partially that even the size of my big bomb sprite isn't that large. Regarding the shell exploding upon contact, it just seems more logical to me. Not entirely, but it still follows game logic, I guess. But for an empowered move, it makes up for it. The second source of inspiration was Chain Blast. You know, like how in the regular version you have to stack up to 4 bombs to make a big explosion, but in the Bar Gear version you just get a big bomb right away with the same blast radius. With Hyper Bomb, it's kind of the opposite. The big hyper bomb is the opposite of the typical chain blast. Could be said to be already stacked with some bombs until it eventually causes an automatic large explosion. Oh, and you could also detonate the bar gear bomb similar to how you would use the regular chain blast. It is obvious that I had an excellent time uh, creating this one. Now it's Gutsman time with super arm. The helmet is simply a meteor construction helmet, which is actually a Japanese construction helmet. Fair, since Mega Man is made by a Japanese company. The arm aesthetic was the most difficult to get right, but in the end I came up with something that resembles an excavation claw arm. Oh yeah, and I gave him a little mask there, just to resemble Gusman's big mouth, but thankfully it's not big in here, like, imagine even Mega Man was a big mouse. I wouldn't imagine that. You all know that super arm is a very conditional weapon. If you came across a lowly rock, you could simply pick it up, crack it, and end its misery. I had to update this one, of course, so you get to dig up and pick up boulders from below the ground as opposed to simply grabbing blocks that are laying around the stage. You can only pick up boulders on normal two tile high terrain, so digging up from a tiny platform like this would be hilarious. You can also place the boulder after picking it up from the ground which helps with platforming challenges. Picking up any boulder or block costs two weapon energy points and throwing them costs this one for a total of three points consumed. Now I decided to make the power gear for super arm rather fast compared to the normal setup. However, you can't use it midair to balance it out. 
On Bower Gear, you toss 3 medium sized boulders into the air, each of which deals 3 damage. It's a terrific covering move, which is why I think confining it to the ground is more fair and logical. When you employ the Bower Gear near a grabbable boulder, you acquire the ability to punch the boulder with a great impulse, causing 8 damage to any enemy type, even shielded enemies. It's a lot of fun to imagine how it might play in a real game. Firestorm comes next. I was inspired by Fireman's head shape for Mega Man's helmet, which will come in handy later when I demonstrate the bar gear. And I made the buster to look like a type of hollow furnace with small gaps around it to prevent overheating and to allow the fireball to radiate when around you when firing. Firestorm is open whose regular version has not changed because it is already efficient. The main difference is that instead of expending one energy with a point, it now consumes two points. It should have been able to spend two points from the start, to be honest. You shoot two fireballs at the same time. Like, what's the chemistry of this thing? Anyways, with the bar gear enabled, your fire ability becomes too strong until you give burst to a fire tackle enemy. Or to put it in another way so it doesn't seem bizarre, you get so angry that you cause the fireman chips you have. To develop a fire tackle. This fire tackle is shot into the air where it lands in the center and spreads out to form five smaller fire tackles. Once these fire tackles start to target opponents on the screen for attack, they all launch at them and if there are no enemies around they just dash directly so you may interpret it as a sort of a homing assault. Also they only target enemies that are under them, they can't target any enemies above them, so balancing reasons. It doesn't stop here however, when you are underwater you are no longer able to shoot a forward fireball, instead you are able to only create the revolving fireball around you, this time costing uh, one weapon energy point. When in the bar gear form and underwater, you create a burst of hot water above your head that deals 4 damage to any nearby enemies. And because it is a burst of boiling water, it would probably hurt. It's science, everyone. <laughs> now for Thunderbeam, I gave Mega Man an electrical pattern like mask for the head, as a reminiscence of a lick man. I changed the colors too, I honestly thought it would be nice to have some unique colorations to some weapons, and since Thunderbeam was not a color combo I was fond with, I decided to change this one first. The design for the buster features three electrodes that mimic the Van de Graaff generator because after all, it is an electrostatic generator. These electrodes are positioned around the buster so that it can shoot three beams when Mega Man is ready to do so. And what exactly is electrostatic you ask? It is essentially electricity at rest and the Vantigraph I stated maintains the emission of electricity inside of its orb. Your hair begins to stand up somewhat as soon as you place your hand on the orb and come in contact with the electrical charges. And in the case of Thunderbeam, I made the decision to stray a little from the norm when it comes to that concept. When you fire a Thunderbeam, normally a single beam of electrical current would be discharged and travel forward as opposed to that Vandegraaff, it would feel static if it was true. However, when you jump, the electricity follows your position and attempts to firmly secure itself to the source position and that's where the Vandegraaff kind of concept comes in. And also it makes it impossible for you to let your arm down until the Thunderbeam finishes moving. Additionally, I altered Thunderbeam's behavior in that way to make it reasonable and fair. Like, you know how absurdly overpowered the Thunderbeam is in Mega Man 1? The main beam has a relatively large hitbox and can fire three directed electrical spaghetti wires that each deal stupid damage. It also requires just one point per use. If it hits the enemy correctly, this version will inflict three damage to the enemy twice. And when in power gear mode, it retains the position following characteristic of the electrostatic thunder beam idea, but with the old thunder beam behavior this time. The beam will mirror the same distance and continue to apply the velocity when you turn around in the opposite direction while it is in motion, with no reset to its horizontal position at all. Here is Ice Slasher now. 
The helmet shape is kind of adorable. All what Mega Man has is an ice hoodie like Iceman. And the buster has turned into a sub-zero cone freezer. Since the ice slasher is a utility weapon, it hasn't changed. Changing it would probably make it less effective. I considered changing it, but I ultimately decided to leave it with the power gear. You create a ripping icicle out of a nitrogen water that freezes quickly on air, dealing 3 damage to the enemy. It then freezes for a short while until the ice effect breaks, dealing an additional 3 damage and the icicle scatters after the cracking dealing 3 damage to nearby enemies. However, you cannot stand on frozen enemies, Super Arm is already there for creating platforms, so eh. Alright, time slows next, and this time, <laughs> I'll stray from my criterion of demonstrating the weapons I had finished with first. Because time slow was the last one I finished with, and why is that? Since I prefer keeping Wave Slider to be the last and Rolling Cutter to be the first. I don't know, I feel it's natural like that, or I'm just weird, I have no idea. Anyways, the design is rather simple. Clock builds for a helmet with a crystal for a forehead and wrist watches without the watches, with two protrusions coming from each arm. The design is set like that since I borrowed how time and blazing powered up almost exactly. Let's see, you fire two clock hand arrows similarly to how time man fires them with an angle being the only difference. It's similar to how you might see a clock with two clock hand arrows at random angles in the case of time man, but in my situation the angle is set to 90 degrees. One clock hand arrow deals two damages and shooting both results in a two point reduction of energy. Unlike the speed gear which slows everything around it, including you and your firing, with time slow you can charge up to slow the speed of anything else but you and your shot. In contrast to bar dub, where it only lasts for two uses, time slow costs you four points this time. When you bar gear, you simultaneously slow time and increase any weapon's fire rate, which comes with a risk if you don't want to quickly use up your weapon's ammo. The effect will still be retained even if you turn off the bar gear. Due to the effect's relation to speed, the effect is now blue to indicate the rate of fire bar. However, if you have a better idea of what I might possibly do with this time slow, please let me know. I believe this version to be mediocre or overly blurry for a power gear. Perhaps I could increase your fire rate without affecting the speed of the enemy. Leaving of what I believe is the best for last, we have oil slider. Design wise, Rock obtained that oil drop shape for a helmet, which is nothing new considering Acid Barrier achieved a shape for a helmet that is reasonably similar. As for the Buster, it closely resembles those old fashioned oil can spouts. Oh, and Rock also has a cool red scarf now, just like Oil Man. Although. Hate your sacrifice. Oil Slider received a significant overhaul. Old Oil Slider only allows you to shoot one oil blob at a time, rendering you useless until you step on the darn stain of oil. In addition, you are not allowed to shoot any additional blobs, which was outrageous. It goes without saying that the main goal was, was to use it as a slide, but it was still a bit poor. So I had an inspiring idea. Being a Mega Man 8-bit deathmatch player, I spent a lot of time playing that game and its mods, centering more on the classes mods that allows you to play as robot masters and what do you know, Oil Man is there. One of his moves is to charge up your oil container, spray some oil blobs on enemies or leave them on the ground. And if you charged up again and stepped on the oil, it would slide by itself and deal stupid damage because they're stacked. Regardless, it's a move that could be modeled after for this change. When you step on an oil blob that has been shot into the ground, it morphs into a sled automatically, moving forward like a ground-hugging weapon and dealing 2 damage. However, there is more. Up to 3 oil blobs stacked on, on the ground can morph into a slightly larger version and will deal 4 damage if only 2 oil blobs are stacked and 3 damage if, if 3 are. With that, you could even spread some oil blobs around randomly on any surface. However, as soon as someone steps on one of them, the other one will grow larger as if by a snowball effect. Here is another amusing one. If you slide on an oil blob, it will quickly boost your sliding motion and allow you to slide a little farther as well. 
And as you can see from this example, Mega Man was also able to use Super Slide to close a two tile gap. And when you power gear, you essentially perform the same oil sliding maneuver as before, except this time you don't need to shoot a blob first like before. Instead you can activate it in place. By pressing down and jumping, you could perform a double jump, allowing your oil to slide off of you and keep sliding. And finally, when you perform an action underwater, there are unavoidably some water phases, uh, physics at play, such as the oil blob rising to the surface and the ability to float when you slide. I adore it when physics is applied to video games rather than paper. But anyways, that wraps it all, awesome people. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Of course, there will be more of that sort of content to come even though it takes me some time to do so. In the meantime, I hope you stay healthy and lead a great life. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.